I'm back. So now that I've got plenty of time to be uploading on YouTube again, I'm going to be uploading a mixture of gameplay and also I'm going to be doing a series called Poke Theory where I'm going to be going over different concepts which are useful and will help you improve your game. So in this episode, I'm going to be going over reverse hierarchy betting. So what is it? So it's basically a continuation bet concept. Um, it's primarily used two-handed after open raising and being called by the big blind. Essentially, the concept focuses around you want to be betting with your worst hands and you want to be checking with some of your real premium hands. And obviously, this isn't like a set strategy. You obviously want to be mixing this and it completely depends on a number of stuff such as the board texture um, and a variety of factors. Um, and what the opponent in the big blind is like. Is he aggressive? Is he likely to check raise you? But yeah, essentially the concept revolves around betting with your lower equity hands. So say you open um, from the button and you've got like your king, king seven or king nine. Uh, you often want to be betting those because if you sort of get check raised, you don't really mind folding those out. They don't necessarily have uh, as good equity as like... Uh, your king, queen, king, ace. And so that's the sort of primary idea behind reverse hierarchy betting. And yeah, it's, it's not a concept which is talked about a lot. You don't I, you don't really see it much on YouTube, but it's something I learned and I think is quite a useful concept uh, to have in mind. Like you don't necessarily want to be sort of sticking to this strategy. Um, definitely not, as you don't want to bec become like predictable and it's, it's not always the best strategy but it's something useful to have in mind and definitely lean towards when you're thinking of whether to sort of check or whether to bet so i'm just going to go over a bit of an example here so as you can see we've got uh so say we've got ace six which we open in the cutoff or the button or one of the later positions and the flop comes to five jack so say our opponent has five eight although this doesn't really matter we're mainly focusing on what we've got obviously um but with that f sort of flop quite often with something like a6 you just want to be betting your hand doesn't necessarily have as good equity as some of your more premium hands um because you've sort of only got the one over to the jack and when you've got a hand like ace high quite often if you bet you're going to be folding out a lot of hands on the big blind and sort of protecting against them just hitting like a random four or a random seven or something like that. Um, so quite often you want to be a bet in a hand like that. Um, and as you can see, you've got 23% equity um, against a middle pair with the opponent having the, the eight kicker. However, when you just swap the six for the king, uh, the king of hearts, it now goes up to nearly 30% equity. So you've got a big jump in the equity here. So the point of reverse hierarchy betting is that if you bet with this ace king and you end up getting check raised from the big blind, it puts you in a position where like you, you may want to continue, but it's sort of one of those where if they put in like a large check raise, you're going to be in a position where you're having to fold out ace king suited, which has a decent amount of equity against pretty much any, anything they have. And it's not something you really want to be folding out. So if you do just check this one back, you've got quite a lot of equity. You can hit, uh, you, you've got your two overs, which you can hit. You've got your backdoor flush draw. Um, and you can see there's a big difference between the equity you have with like your ace six and your ace king. So that's why you sort of sometimes want to be betting um, with your less premium hands and checking back with your your ace king or your suited suited hands like that. Um, so that is basically the main concept between reverse hierarchy betting. And as I say, you don't want to be sticking to this strategy like completely rigidly, um, but it is a really useful concept to have in mind and will definitely help to improve your continuation betting strategy um, and play in two-handed pots against the big blind. So that is reverse hierarchy betting. Thanks for watching and if you found it useful, subscribe.